So in this video, we'll talk about three different ways of communicating between different submodules or packages in ROS. One, message. Two, service. And three, actions. Hello guys. So this is our second video in our series, which is all about ROS and robotics. In the previous video, we talked about what ROS exactly is in a very intuitive way. And in this video, although I said we will talk about ROS too, but before that, there is something we need to focus on. We need to understand what different communication methodologies are present in ROS to connect different modules in a distributed system when we build our robot using ROS. So in this video, we'll talk about three different ways of communicating between different submodules or packages in ROS. One, message. Two, service. And three, actions. I love understanding everything using examples. So let's take an example like the last video. In the last video, we were talking about a naive example which was a trash picking robot and the software design for it. This was exactly the software design we were talking about as an example. The trash picking robot is responsible for looking at trash in its surroundings and if it finds something, it'll pick up trash, put it in the bin and then this process continues. So this robot will keep looking at trash in its surroundings and then picking all of it up. And this is an example software design for it. If you have watched the previous video, you would know what exactly I'm talking about. If not, you don't really need to go to the previous video because our topic right now is about understanding different communication methodologies and not really raw software design per se. So the trash picking robot has three software modules or packages as we call it ROS. One, perception. This module is responsible for finding trash in the surroundings. If there is trash present, then this module will inform brain through one communication channel, which is called visual info right now. Again, when gets any information from perception using this channel visual info, it will process this information. And if it decides that the robot needs to move, it will inform the actuation package. This is done using another communication channel called commands in this example. In addition, there would be times where brain would need to understand if all the battery levels are fine in different actuators. Here in the example, you can see that there is something called motor states. This is another communication channel for brain to get information about the battery status of motors. So we have three different communication channels in this example, visual info, commands and motor states. Now let's tie this to three different communication methodologies we were talking about before. Again, they were messages, services, and actions. Let's start with messages. A message is implemented using something called a topic. A topic literally means a topic which is of interest to both a party or a package which wants to talk about it and a package which wants to listen to this topic. So in this case, if perception only wants to talk about one topic, which is visual info, it will only do that. So it will constantly publish on the topic called visual info and brain would subscribe to that topic. So the words topic, publishers and subscribers literally map to what we understand as humans. A topic is literally a topic of interest. A publisher is a package which talks about this topic and a subscriber is the one who wants to know what's happening in this topic. So it will subscribe to this topic. This is completely asynchronous. That means that the publisher doesn't need to publish at a set frequency again and again. As and when it has information, it can publish to this topic. And whenever a publisher publishes to this topic, the subscriber is connected to this topic. So it will get the same information as published by the publisher all the time. So this is the first communication methodology. Now second, let's talk about motor states. In this example, we can do the same thing with motor states, right? Actuation package can publish its motor's battery status from time to time and brain can subscribe to this topic and get information. But there can be a slight change to this as well. Let's imagine that brain wants to get battery status of two different or three different uh, physical modules in actuation. In that case, what will happen is brain, instead of subscribing to this topic called motor states, can actually use something called a service. In this case, what brain will do is whenever brain wants to know the battery status of any components in actuation, it will ask actuation and say that I want to know the battery status of your motor or of any other part of the physical system. And actuation will get this question through the service. Then depending on what brain is asking, actuation will send the battery status of whichever part was requested for by brain. So this is something called a service. In a publisher subscriber method, which is used for topics, the publisher is sending information at whatever rate or even asynchronously whenever it wants to. But in case of a service, the service client, which is brain in this case, when it's asking for information, can ask whenever it wants to. So there is no set rate. 
It's also asynchronous, but now instead of a package sending information, the package which wants to receive information is initiating this transfer. So in this case, brain would request actuation for information and then actuation will respond back. So it is literally a service you're asking for. So brain is asking for a service here and actuation will have something called a server. So it is like a service server itself. And then this server in actuation will respond and complete this task. Bear in mind that services are mostly used when you need to ask for information from one package and you actually send something when you're asking for it. For instance, in this case, brain is saying, send me the battery status of your motors. So the word motor is pretty important here. If you see for examples on the internet about services, what you will see is addition of two numbers. So in that case, a service client sends two numbers and the server is asked to add these two numbers and send back the result. So what you're sending is also important. In case of a publisher subscriber method, the publisher is just sending information. The subscriber is not sending any arguments based on which the publisher will send different information. So this was all about services. Let's talk about the third one, which is actions. Again, as an example, we have something called commands here. Let's say brain decided that actuation should move the robot. So brain would say, move the robot to XYZ position, or if it's a 2D plane, XY position. Now what happens in action is brain will first say that, hey, actuation, you need to move the robot to X, Y, and Z position. And after that, actuation will throughout this process also send feedback, which is something like the robot is at this position right now. After some time, it moved to this position. So instead of just saying that I have completed my task and the robot is in the final position, it will give intermediate feedback. So brain always knows that, hey, I asked the robot to move to some XYZ position, which is the endpoint, but I also know where it is right now. So it is in the process. And also there's one more difference. In actions, you can actually cancel the action. Let's say you ask the robot to move to X, Y, and Z position, but because of some logic or because of some reason, you want to stop the robot midway. So you can actually cancel this action. So actuation will stop moving the robot in that case. Also, a side note, in case of services, once the action client requests for something, then it cannot cancel this. So if you say, hey, send me the battery status of your motors from brain, it cannot cancel it. It will keep waiting for the results. There's also a subtle difference between ROS1 and ROS2 here, to be honest. In ROS1, when you ask for a service from a service client, the call is blocking. In ROS2, that is not the case, but it's still too early to talk about ROS1 and ROS2 right now. So these were the three different methods of communication between different packages. And based on what you want and what your requirement is while building a system, you use one of these three methodologies. I hope the idea is a lot more clear to you. If not, you can always comment here and we can talk about it more. I can make more videos and we can always engage in any discussion you want. I will now see you in the next video where we will finally talk about the differences between ROS1 and ROS2. And after that, we are going to start building something using ROS2. So see you guys in the next video.